Now, are you tired of seeing too many does on your land compared to how many bucks you have? And everyone talks about buck to doe ratios, but what does it really mean? Because what you're seeing, someone else probably isn't seeing, and what both of you are seeing probably isn't what a third person's seeing. So really, I wanted to kind of break it down for you and talk about why what you do on your land matters. I think in the olden days, it used to talk about, I mean, people used to talk about where it really depended on the habitat what determined how many bucks you had, how many does you had on your property. And there are some properties that just had more bucks and some properties that just had more does. There wasn't a lot of thought put into that concept back in the 80s and the 90s and even into the 2000s. But now, right now, in 2020, and what I've been talking about for many years now, it, there is there are properties that are true 5% parcels, meaning that 5% of all lands hold the attention and focus of the daylight movements of mature bucks. I don't believe that it's more than five to 10% at most that actually attract the daylight attention of bucks, but there's a lot of reasons why and really need to understand buck to doe ratio because it's gonna tell you if your property has what it takes. Not necessarily the number of food plots per acre, the percentage of food plots, sometimes even the type of food plot that you plant, how you manage your timber. If you're practicing, quote, TSI, whatever you're doing, really think about this and these, this concept right here as it applies. Because if you're tired of seeing too many does and not seeing a lot of bucks, I'm going to explain to you why. And we're going to break it down with three different parcels. Let's just throw a river going through the land right here. That's going through the neighborhood. Let's say you have a parcel right here. This parcel on the north side is cut off by the river. We're gonna say that this is 53 acres right here. Now we're gonna say right here, this parcel goes down, goes across, and we're gonna say that this parcel is 67 acres. So a little bit larger. Over here, we have this parcel off to the side. That's a 20 acre parcel. Now on this 67 acres, there's food plots everywhere. And what's really cool about that, and I see this a lot is, here's the cabin down here. And there's an access road that connects all these food plots. So you can go from one back to the other and easy to get around the property, right? The 53 acres right here. And let's say, just to make this simple, there's ag all the way around this. This is in an area where there could be a lot of deer per acre. Let's just look at it that way. There's a lot of deer. The population density is very high. And let's say on this over here, that river extends up here and then this is public land. It's fairly remote. Here's the main road system out here. It goes down the west side. And by the time you get back into there, to that parcel, here's an easement coming in to get to this parcel right here. That parcel is pretty remote. So let's look at all these. The 53 acres here, they strategically loaded, located food. So it's up in this corner. Maybe even over on this side right here. This property is hunted very well. On a scale of one to 10, this is hunted by experienced hunters. They've done what they could to maximize the value of their land. In this case right here, this 53 acres, they're hunting skill level. I'm going to look at this on all of them. Their hunting skill level is a 10 out of 10. It's as high, it can, as, high as it can be. 67 acres. A lot more food on it. Their hunting skill level, 5 out of 10. And that matches how they worked on the property and the type of quality they put into their property. 20 acres. They don't hunt much. Skill level. Five out of 10. Been hunting their whole life. They have a lot of experience. No food plots, no habitat improvements. 
and they're next to that public land around there. What I see typically in this case right here, the 67 acres, a lot of food, hunted on an average scale with great habitat improvements, they're going to see a lot of does. In fact, their ratio might be 10 to one where they're seeing so many does compared to every buck because they have a lot of food, they've spooked the deer off their land, the deer are attracted to the food, they spook them off again, they have this repel, attract uh, condition that creates a doe factory on their land. They have summer food, they load it up with does and fawns, they hunt poorly during the fall, or at least on an average scale, and it pushes off a lot of mature bucks that really demand a higher level of reclusiveness. Those bucks, they go this way, to that deep, remote, public land. So by the time they get back to this 67 acre, high doe to buck ratio property, it's well after dark and it's nocturnal. But what's cool is this number five parcel right here. While those does, they wanna stay in, in that little bubble right there. Those does, they're homebodies. Doesn't matter where they're at. They have a fraction of a home range of what a mature buck does. So you look in this area, those does don't mind staying in that window all the time. Why not? They have good food, they have good cover. Even if a few of them get shot, there's enough room for everybody. This property right here, no food, no attraction. They see a pass through of deer here and there. If they pressure the property a lot, they probably go run through. But overall, they're not seeing a lot of deer. A lot of properties I see like this, they see four bucks for every doe. They see more bucks than does. The problem is it's very random. They might shoot one deer in the rut and they might even have their favorite sand where they shoot a giant buck every year, which is fine if that's all you're looking for, but zero ability to influence the local herd even though they're seeing a pretty good buck to doe ratio, really good buck to doe ratio. You have this property right up here. Two does for every buck, really balanced. They're doing it right, which is what I try to teach on this channel. They have a decent amount of food plots per acre. They could even have the same number of food plots per acre down here. They have good deer numbers. They've learned to maximize the number of does they have to hit that perfect spot right here on the overall number. And for that, that's given them the perfect number of bucks they can actually attract on their land. Really good ratio. Somewhere around those two does for every buck. Great ratio. This person's seen 10 to one. The ratio in the area stinks. We need more doe tags. This person over here is happy. He shoots his occasional buck during the rut. Maybe opening day of gun season. He only has 20 acres. He sees quite a few bucks. He doesn't have to do any work. Not a big deal. This person up here sees a lot of bucks, quite a few does, but a balanced amount. And they honestly get to be the herd influencer in the area because they will hold the attention. They have the depth of cover I talk about. Their food's off to one side so they can maximize the number of acres that they can give to does bedding close to those food sources and freeing space up in the middle so that they can actually hold more bucks on the land. You know what's interesting about all of this? This person sees 10 to one, this person sees more bucks, this person sees the, uh, more of a balance. And who's right at guesstimating the, the ratio of bucks to does in the area? They're all right. They could each be writing down observations in their logs and their hunting journals every year. They could be scouring their trail cam photos to make sure what they have, what they don't. But bottom line is the entire area is probably more like a two and a half does for every buck area. It's really hard to get past four does for every buck in any area because guess what? Half of every two fawns on average is a buck. So very hard to get. You can't, 10 to one is not realistic. It really isn't folks, it's impossible. Four bucks to every doe is impossible. Somewhere around two to one is a good buck to doe ratio. 
but this is the neighborhood. It encompasses other lands too. So you're looking at more of an average. If you're seeing 10 does to every buck, look at some of those reasons that cause that. It's causing nocturnal properties. That would be hunting pressure, maybe food that doesn't last the season. Maybe you're establishing a doe factory with fawns during the summertime. Does that are here today are here to stay. They stay in through the hunting season. They have a very small home range. Bottom line is bad property right here. This property, 20 acres, guy shoots an occasional buck, kind of cool. This one right here, this property right here, they are the herd influencer of the neighborhood. Ask yourself, what is your ratio? Ask yourself, are you actually the herd influencer? This person spends a lot of money on habitat improvements, on food plots, might even have a big fancy tractor and, and drill. Might have even paid people to come out and work on the property, built water holes, added water holes, mock scrapes. They've done so much, they can't step foot on the property without spooking deer and they've created a nocturnal herd. For that, they're gonna see an enormous amount of does per buck, but it's actually a very false doe to buck ratio and it has nothing to do with their land. It has everything to do with how their habitat improvements have been created, how they've been linked together. And that ratio is a function of not only poor habitat management, but poor hunting management too. So once you think about all this, what is the perfect buck to doe ratio? Something we look at, get rid of the buck to doe ratio concept right here for a second. What I see on most quality lands is that you're going to see about the same number of bucks over the course of a season, unique antlered bucks from year and a half old yearling bucks, all the way up to whatever the age class is in your area. It might be two years old, might be three years old. It's all relative. But you're gonna see over the course of an entire hunting season with trail cameras. Trail cameras will let you see about two to three times more bucks than you're gonna see in person. So those observation logs are awesome when you're in the stand, but they're not gonna give you a true picture of your buck to doe ratio. The trail cameras will give that accurate picture. If the habitat's linked together and you can use a small amount of cameras to actually give you a really true tit picture. But what you're gonna find is the number of does and fawns will somehow equal, somewhat relate to the number of antlered bucks on your land every year. And that's typical of our area over here. We might see 15, 20, 25 does and fawns every year in a certain property. And that'll yield about 25 to 30 different bucks, antlered bucks. We see that ratio and it's very, very common. Does it have anything to do scientifically or biologically? Probably not, but it's a ratio that I see around the entire country. So if you're doing a good job, you're gonna see an enormous number of bucks, pretty equal to the number of does and fawns, but you have to have daylight cover, daylight food, and unpressured habitat. You have to hit that balance. You have to reduce the number of does that you see during the summertime so that you can allow those to be a slow trickle when it gets into the end of September, into October, November, and December. And bottom line is you have to to manage your hunting pressure, or you're gonna see buck to doe ratios that are unfortunately poorly off the charts. And always keep in mind that if you're seeing 10 does for every buck, that means someone else is sitting on a 5% parcel in the neighborhood that has a really good balance. And there's probably someone else in the neighborhood that just has some woods off to the side, hardly hunts the land, doesn't pressure the land, doesn't create any food plots. And they're seeing an occasional decent buck on the land probably during the daylight. So think about those three properties, and of course you go into a lot more complexities with various properties, but throw that buck to doe ratio concept out the window and really look at it as a neighborhood function and really a function of how are you manage your hunting pressure and how are you linking those habitat improvements to actually create a daylight deer herd that includes a decent buck to doe ratio. Never settle for those 10 does to every buck uh, ratio or five or 15 when people say that it immediately points to there's a lot more going on in the property in a negative way than might otherwise be indicated try to be that balanced parcel that year this year and i talk about it all the time are you really a herd influencer and if you are you're going to see more of a balanced ratio you're going to see just as many mature bucks during the daylight or around shooting hours that you do at night and you will have learned to maximize not only the quality of your herd 
in the quality of your property, in the potential of your property. But oh, by the way, you're probably going to have a great hunt. And I'd love to hear about it down in the comments down below.